on today's lesson then at that point. Now, I said earlier this is kind of a short lesson, meaning we're only going to do it two or three examples because it's redundant. This is all about practice this time. You practice it more, it gets a lot easier as you do it. So we're going to take a look at division of polynomials today. So we're kind of going away from direct and indirect variation now. So we're pretty much done with direct and indirect variation. We're now moving forward onto polynomial functions. And this is the beginning of polynomial functions. It's lumped together in chapter 8, but it's really not that related at all. Okay, so 8, 3 is about division of polynomials. Now, we're going to specifically do this with what's called long division, which you've done. It's the only way you've learned division before. Right, when you make that little, little box kind of thing there, you do long division when you were a kid. We're going to do that with this method. The reason we're going to do that is because later we're going to learn another division technique called synthetic division, which is definitely new to everyone in this room. You've never learned this before. You take it out of uh, high school, or even it's usually like a later course in algebra or pre-cal. Uh, but we're going to look at synthetic division, which follows along with long division. Now, there are certain problems that don't work by using synthetic division, so we have to have long division down pat. So let's start with this idea. First, I want you to think of long division with remainders, with remainders, and use the same rules. Okay, so for example, let's pick something that works nicely, that gives us a remainder, meaning works nicely. Let's try 79 divided by 6. Okay? 79 divided by 6. And obviously, you've done this in like most third grade, fourth grade when you learn long division, I guess. But the idea is still something that should be in the back of your mind. How many times does 6 go into 7 is always the first question, right? How many times does 6 go into 7? And what's that answer? Please appease me for now. 6 into 7, just into 7. Yeah, 13 is what we're going to get. We're going to get, we're going to get 13. We're going to get 13. He's just jumping ahead. But 6 goes into 7 only once for now. I'm doing this real slow on purpose because in a minute this will be very useful. How did we get the number that appeared down here with long division? Remember I did this with long division? Where did this number come from next? Where did it come from? You multiply the 6 and the 1. Yeah, you always multiply these, right? We're going to do this in a second, so I want you to see this technique. So the 1 times the 6 gives me a 6 here. Now, if you don't remember, it's okay, but if you do remember, what do I do with these two numbers? Subtract, Subtract right? Do we all remember that? That's immensely important in this section. You have to remember that whatever you get after you multiply these two things comes here, and then you're going to subtract these two things. So yes, we subtract them. When I do, I'm left with a 1. What do I do with the 9 next? Bring it down. Bring it down. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing in a minute with polynomials. Whatever's the next piece of the polynomial, the next term, will be brought down one at a time. I then ask myself again, what number goes up here so that when it's multiplied by this, I get as close to this as possible without going over. Again, what goes up here, because we're going to do this in a moment with polynomials, the same rules apply. What goes up here that when multiplied by this gets me as close to this as possible without going over? What is it, Claire? Yeah. Okay, so it has the three, the second part to, to 13. Now, if I go ahead and look at this now, I say, okay, well, I've got this 3 up here times this 6, and that gives me 18 clearly, which leaves me with a remainder of 1. What do I do with that remainder? Like, you've done this before, which is fine, right? That's what you learned in middle school. But now that you're in high school, what is a remainder really? What is a remainder really? Yeah, it's like the decimal portion. In this case... You have one remainder out of what did you divide? So what's the decimal one sixth really? Approximately. Yeah, it's really just a fraction. Good, that's a good way to put it. It's a fraction. You said decimal, but same thing, right? So this is the fractional portion of the answer, or the decimal portion that it gives you. But it's not 21. Remember, it's not, it's not 0.1. What this means is that this divides in 13 times with one left over. And that's where this answer comes from, 13 and 1 sixth. Remember that when you divide with long division, the remainder becomes the numerator of the fractional part of your mixed number. This is a mixed number. 
It's got an integer part and a fraction part. So the numerator of the fraction part comes from the remainder. We will use this in a minute. So if you didn't know that, you should probably put an arrow showing the remainder going into the numerator there, or becoming the numerator. Okay, so if I didn't know this and I was taking notes, I would do that. And then I would probably also do this. Okay, I'd probably do both of those things to show where the fractional part comes from. This might be obvious to like, I think most of you, but there may be a couple of you that didn't know much about this fractional part with the remainder. If you haven't seen that before, it's okay, but recognize that this is a portion of the sixth that is left. How much of it? It is one sixth. If the remainder were a two, it becomes two sixths, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Same technique will be used, okay? Questions so far? So by the way, one sixth as a decimal, anybody have an idea where that is? One sixth, approximately? Yeah, very good, you know that one? Can you check it, okay. But either way, you know what's easy to remember to know? Because two sixths is one third, right? And that's 0 0.333 repeated, which is in my life 33 and a third. Half of that is around 16.6 repeated. So if you, just to keep the decimals in your head so you know. So yeah, this is 13.16 repeating, not 13.1. Remember, the decimal is not the actual number. I'm sorry, the remainder is not the actual number that goes to the decimal. Whatever the fraction comes out to be is what the decimal really is. All right, so let's use this to go ahead and solve the first problem together, and then I might give you a little time to work on the next ones, maybe with the person next to you, because it's a, it's a monotonous routine the whole time. So let's go ahead and think about this. We are dividing, we are dividing this polynomial, so let's put it inside here, by x minus 3. So that's going to go outside over here. And this is literally what we just did. We divided 79 by 6 a minute ago. So we put the 79 inside of it, and we put the 6 outside of it. No loop there, it's a square root. Yeah, yeah, just so you're aware, guys, no, no little loop here at all. No little symbol. This has to be a bracket. That's all it can be. A little, a little symbol here is a square root now, right? Don't confuse this with a square root. I looked around real quick and saw a couple of you did that. OK, this is very different. This is very different than this. Okay, look at those two symbols. One is a square root, one is a division. Now, I ask myself again the same question. I want to think about this problem as what can I put up over here so that when multiplied times this, I get something here that can be as close to this as possible to subtract. I don't care about the next term yet. Remember, like before, we didn't care about the 9 and 79, right? We cared about the seven only first. So only focus on the first thing first. What can I put up here so that when I multiply this by this binomial, I get a binomial here where this is as close to each other as possible? X. And let's see, if you didn't see it, let's go through the process. Put an X up here. Take that X and multiply it, distributing, right? You have to distribute here, it's distributive property. Multiply that x by both of these things. What does this become when it's x times x minus 3? x squared minus 3x. Write that right here. Again, multiply this. Make believe you have parentheses around it if you need to. Multiply this x by both terms. This becomes x squared minus 3x. Stay with me. If you don't get an x, please. Again, x times this whole thing, that's x squared, x times a negative 3 is negative 3x. Mark. Isn't that greater than just x squared though? It's the same. These are the, again, ignore the second number, remember as I said. Only look at the first two. We want this to be as close to this as possible. If we can make it the same, we're going to do that. Just like earlier, if it were 6, 60, 68 divided by 6. But 1 times the 6 is 6. 6 minus 6 drops off, right? Same thing's going to happen here. But what operation must I apply here? What did I talk about earlier? I said it's going to be really important. What do you do for this next step? Subtract. Subtract. So ready? Watch, please. Watch. You need to subtract the whole thing. Again, you need to subtract the whole thing. 
the x squared minus x squared is what? Everybody. Zero. That's the easy part. But then you have to remember that this is 2x minus negative 3x. If you need to write it down, write it down. So you put a little note. 2x, and then it's minus a negative 3x, which is really n, right? So it's become simply 5x. Consider the fact that I don't want that 5x there anymore. And I know you guys are like, what should it be the 2x? Because we use the number in long division here. That's the one big difference you're going to notice. With long division a moment ago, we cared about the fact that there was a 9. Well, the 9 came down as a thing, right? Now we worry about 19. So let's bring this 4 down now. Let's go ahead and bring that 4 down. And let's care about 5x plus 4 now. Again, just like earlier, we were left with a 1, and then we brought down the 9. We said, how many times does 6 go into 19? Now we have to ask ourselves, what can go up here to multiply by this that pretty much gets as close to getting rid of the first term as possible? So what value can I put up top so when I multiply it and distribute to these, I get 5x right here and something else over here? Just 5. Okay, just 5. So let's take a 5 and put it up top, and it's a plus 5. Take that 5 now, take that 5, distribute it. Remember, just like you did with long division, it's this times this gets subtracted from this. Again, this times this is subtracted from this. So let's go ahead and multiply that 5 by the x minus 3. It'll become 5x minus 15. Remembering to subtract this whole thing. Remembering to subtract this whole thing. So it's the same process you're undergoing. Just a little bit trick. 5 times the quantity x minus 3 gives us this, 5x minus 5x is 0. That's always going to work out with these problems, by the way. Go write yourself a little note. The first thing that you're trying to make this close to, or as close to as possible, will always end up being equal to it. And they're always going to cancel each other out. These are going to cancel each other out. It's always going to drop straight down on. And now it becomes 4 minus negative 15. Again, this becomes just 4 minus negative 15. And that becomes 19, because minus a negative is positive. So rem my remainder is 19. My remainder is 19. But if you guys recall, a minute ago, I didn't write it with remainder. I wrote it as a fraction. So I want to write it as a fraction. Can somebody tell me what the answer should look like as a fraction based on the same arrangement as the last example we did? What should the final answer read? That's my fractional part, I agree. Oh, the first part is x plus 5. Very good. So this is my answer right here on the right. And let me point some things out. This right here, take a look. You can write a little note if you want. This is like the whole number part to the mixed fraction you had. Remember the answer was 13 and 1 sixth. This x plus 5 is really the 13 part. And then the 1 sixth as a fraction is this right here. So remember, the remainder, the remainder becomes the numerator. The divisor, this is the word divisor, the thing that you're dividing by. The divisor becomes the denominator. The quotient up top, the quotient up top becomes the whole number portion. If this is a mixed fraction, whether you agree or not, it is. One and a half is one 
plus one half, right? Don't forget, a mixed number really has a plus sign there. You can't forget that. You know that sounds weird. One and seven eighths is one plus seven eighths. Seven and two thirds is seven plus two thirds. So this plus sign is here because I'm using variables. With numbers, I don't put the plus sign, right? I don't write seven plus two thirds. I write seven and two thirds. But this plus or minus sign needs to be here now. What if this remainder was negative 19? Just put this as a minus 19. So this becomes a minus sign. Okay? The technique is the same as long division. It's a question of can you go through the process over and over. And the process problems take practice to do better on. So if you don't do your homework, you're not going to do well on this topic at all. You need to do your homework. And that means doing it tonight, or this weekend for you guys, not really now. But not two weeks after the homework is due, because now you're just looking at stuff that was two weeks ago, right? So it's not helping you to re, I don't know, to reevaluate, to reinforce those techniques that you're learning in class today. Okay, so please make sure you have to practice. We can do, well, actually, let's do this. Working with the person next to you, try the second one. And then I'll go to the third one together. So you just read this and this. Yeah. Right? So your answer is unfortunately not just x plus 5. If this divides evenly by x plus 5, then the remainder would be 1. Let's do the divide evenly by x plus 5. Yeah, what's the remainder? Yeah, you're still recording. <laughs> 